Hey, what's up guys? My name is Mike Samhori. Today I'm going to show you how to install a Frigidaire dishwasher, specifically model number FFID2426TS. However, this installation applies to many Frigidaire dishwashers. Alright, before I get started, if you haven't removed your old dishwasher, check out my video on how to uninstall your existing dishwasher. It's very helpful in that regard. First thing I'm going to do is walk you through what to expect um, when you purchase a Frigidaire dishwasher. Specifically this model, um, you're going to notice it's going to come in typically uh, a box like this and then there's the dotted line that goes across the bottom all the way around. Um, an easy way um, to get the unit unboxed, of course you're not going to be ripping open the top and trying to pull the dishwasher out or laying it down or anything like that. You're actually going to want to lift the box over the dishwasher. And easy way to do it, just angle it this way, get your box cutter and just put you at the perfect angle to do a nice smooth cut. So just, just like that. like that and then as I said you simply just lift the box right over the dishwasher I'm gonna go ahead and show you what to expect when you purchase a new dishwasher um, what comes with it along with what you'll need and the tools the tools that will make this job easy so one of the things I'll, I'll point out now is that uh, Frigidaire dishwashers will typically come with the drain hose already attached. So you're going to look for it, it's just like this, it comes connected from underneath from the pump and then as you can see, just to give you a visual, it's from underneath and then it comes secured right here and then um, onto the other side, same thing, just secured right here. So that's your drain hose. and. As I mentioned, it's already pre-attached. So there's your drain hose. I, I pop it off um, for, the, for this portion of the install right now. And then once you get the unit opened up, you're gonna see this stuff here. You're gonna have your product registration, your owner's manual, a few um, parts for your di uh, dish, uh, sorry, your silverware basket. And then there's also a couple mounting screws that are located inside this bag. You get a sample detergent and jet dry. And that's that for what comes with the unit. Now, in addition to what the unit comes with, what you're also going to need is your supply line. So depending on what your plumbing looks like, if you're replacing an existing dishwasher, um, and you know your line may be directly connected to the valve and you can't disconnect it that's one thing you may have to reuse that line otherwise I recommend going with a stainless steel like a steel braided hose and the dishwasher size it's a 3 8 inch um, connection for the hose so you're gonna need a, a supply line so we have our drain we have our supply then um, along with the supply line to attach that to the dishwasher you're gonna need this 90 degree elbow, which is a 3 8 inch pipe thread um, male end, and then a 3 quarter inch hose thread um, female end. And this end actually will secure to the dishwasher, and this end, your water, your stainless steel supply line gets secured to this, just like that, and will run uh, under your sink to your water valves. So, we got that checked off, so you're, you're uh, fitting there. And then the final thing that you'll need, well not the final thing, sorry. One, the thing that you'll need for um, the drain hose is a clamp. So to, for, the, for the clamp on the dishwasher that will attach, depending on your plumbing again, your dishwasher may be draining into a connection under your sink for the drain, or it'll be um, connected to your garbage disposal so depending on that size that's why i like this particular clamp because you could adjust it uh to fit to whether or not you're going to need to 
um, depending on what you know what your plumbing looks like. So if it's a garbage disposal, the hose will directly attach, and then you can adjust this to, to fit that. If it's not, if you don't have a garbage disposal and you just have a drain connection, then we'll adjust the drain hose to connect to the drain connection, and then you could tighten it down with this style clamp. And then finally, the regarding the electrical, these dishwashers come prepared to be hardwired if you have a direct line. So you may have an electric line that is located um, behind in, in the space of your dishwasher. So if yours is hardwired, that's very common. Um, most dishwashers um, are prepared, are, are set up for hardwire. Some of the models now are starting to come with a pre-attached power cord. However, you can always add the power cord if yours is hardwired. I'm sorry, you can always add the power cord if you have an outlet. So you may have an outlet under your sink that you know your existing dishwasher may be plugged in with a with a um, with a power cord, and in that regard, in that in that um, scenario, you would need to install the power cord as well. Um, and if um, so, this is my recommended cord. I like this style cord because sometimes under your sink, if you have an outlet, and that outlet is used to not only power the dishwasher, but then there's a second outlet um, in that box for the garbage disposal. And depending on the placement of where it goes, this style plug gives you that flexibility of where it can go. Sometimes there's another style power cord that um, angles down and if it angles down it won't you won't be able to keep your garbage disposal installed so I recommend this power cord um, there's gonna be a link in the description on the ideal dishwasher kit that will actually include um, your power cord your wire nuts your uh, supply line the, um, the the clamp for the drain hose and the 90 degree elbow so take a look there if you have if you if you need some of these parts now, um, before we get started, I'm gonna go ahead and point out a couple of things that I'm gonna be using to get this dishwasher installed. So you're gonna to wanna to get yourself a drill, just a standard drill. We're not doing anything crazy as far as tightening or loosening. You may need that just for primarily for securing the unit. Um, then you'll need um, either um, an open uh, adjustable wrench or a 5 8 inch wrench as well, which is the size of the hose for the, for the supply line. So an adjustable wrench would be Great. I like these type of vice grip um, pliers. This is good as well. This will help loosen the feet um, and a few other things, but I'll, I'll, I'll show you in later steps. Then, um, you know, uh, Phillips screwdriver, possibly a flathead, depending on your scenario. So these are just some tools that I like to keep my hand in. I got some drill bits. But other than that, we can uh, go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is prepare this dishwasher for installation. And in order to do so, what you're gonna to wanna to do is lay the unit on its back. That's gonna be the easiest way for me to not only demonstrate all the connections that need to be made, but also for you as well to get that done. So just lay it on its back side, make sure the drain hose is not um, behind it, it's free and clear. And from there, what we'll go ahead and do is start with the connections that are gonna be made first thing you're going to do is remove the kick plate because that's going to be in your way so go ahead and remove the the kick plate first and this particular kick plate is secured with a screw that not only has a Phillips head but can also be used you can also use a nut driver like a quarter inch nut driver if you have that it can, make, it can be easier but it does you can remove it with a Phillips screw so I'll pop that off that gets the kick, kick plate moved out of the way I will point out to you while we're at this point with the kick plate, it comes with two parts. This is the primary kick plate. This is an extension in, in you know, situations where if you have like tile floors um, or if, you're, you know, if, you're, if your cabinets, for example, might have been installed above a floor and you, you know, it, allows, it allows you to just fill in the gap. So this just pretty much is just a, a guide so that you can extend this kick plate uh, depending on your installation. So don't throw that away. So it's both used. Um, now, the next thing is, it doesn't matter uh, with how you start this, this portion of it, but for this particular installation, we're actually gonna be, I'm gonna show you how to install a power cord to the dishwasher, because we're gonna, um, for, our, for our site here, we're gonna actually plug in the dishwasher. Um, you're gonna locate this box under the dishwasher, and this is gonna be where the unit gets um, either hardwired or you install the power cord. Again, this is a Phillips screw that will can, uh, that will remove it, or a oh, actually, sorry, it's not a Phillips screw. It's a star bit or a quarter inch um, nut driver. So let me grab the star bit and get that taken off. Pop 
that off. I'll show you that, I'll show you that bit so you can see it. But the, the bit for that electric, it's just a star bit. Um, or like I said, you could also use a nut driver, a quarter inch nut driver to remove it. But I don't have that with me today. So let me pop that off. Need a little more power. On that tight. All right, so, let's that up. so that pops the electrical cover off, and then it gives you access to the wires to be able to secure the unit. These are the wires here that um, you'll be using. You got a white wire and a black wire, and then you have this green ground screw. So if you're hardwiring your dishwasher, what you're gonna do is run you're, you're in a, you know, as this unit, picture this unit standing up, you're gonna have your electric um, hard wire that's behind the dishwasher. You're gonna run it right through this hole here, and then that gives you the uh, access that you need so that you can um, secure the lines. Um, make sure that when you do run that, the, you have like the clamp that will allow you to secure this to this box so those wires aren't loose and they won't, you know, ground out in any way. Um, but as I said, I'm gonna go ahead and do the power cord installation just to show you because it's exactly the same as if you were hardwiring the unit just with a power cord instead of um, hard wires. So let me point, show you that first. So with my power cord here, I have uh, this power cord, this particular power cord comes with a pre-installed clamp that will hold the line um, in place. So we just fish that right through the back first and then this just clips into place as you, just like that and then um, from there we have three wires that you're gonna have not only if you hardwire or the power cord you have a white the black and the the green ground um, first thing I like to do just to get out of the way is go ahead and secure my ground wire so all you're gonna do with your ground wire is wrap it around the green screw just like that you want to hold the ground wire so it doesn't start spinning. As you tighten down that screw, it'll want to spin. So try to hold that ground wire so it doesn't start spinning on you. It makes a good connection. So once you do that, you just tighten it down just like this, holding the, green, the, the wire itself, and then it'll catch. Make sure that's nice and snug. You don't, want it to, you don't want any loose wires. So tighten it down all the way, and then once it gets to the end, as you can see, it's wanting to spin. That's okay. It's nice and tight. It's not going anywhere. The, green, the ground is now secured. Then you're gonna go ahead and make your connections for the white and the black wire. <clears throat> Typically what you wanna do is have the wires, um, you don't, you know, you wanna have them up right to each other. I usually don't like to have, a, like I don't like to have my, my exposed copper to be different lengths. So I like to go ahead and have it to where they're even and then, um, and then I use, hold the wires together and I use the wire nut to actually twist it together. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut down, um, well, for demonstrated purposes, give me one second. I'm gonna go ahead and cut down my wire there and show you how that's done. So, we'll, so I'm here, and I'm just gonna cut down the wire a little bit. Boom. So just like that, and then. We'll just use the wire nut, like I said. So you don't want to try to twist them together by hand. Just put them right even with each other and then use the wire nut and use that to tighten the wires. So it's very important that you hold the wires so that you can actually get a secure connection. Don't let, like, hold the two wires firmly and then turn and use the wire nut to tighten the, 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 the ends. As you can see, I did that and now, and then give a tug to each of the, di the different lines, just making sure that they're it didn't just secure to one of the lines. So you have a nice secure connection. And we're going to repeat the same step with the with the black wire. So same thing. I'm going to go ahead and trim that a little bit and do the same thing. So we're here. They're right there, right up against each other. And same thing. I'm going to hold the wires both firmly and use the wire nut to to tighten it down. So, once it's really tight, again, same thing. Double check yourself, make sure that both wires are um, con um, connecting. Now, the final thing, uh, well, just before that's done, now, you could either put the cover back on now, 
or wait until you actually test for power. So the only difference is that if you're installing this and you're hardwiring it, obviously you're not going to be able to make that connection at this angle because your electric line is not going to be long enough to reach to here. So typically what you have to do if you're hardwiring the unit and your wire is not long enough, you do the wiring in later steps once you slide the unit in place then you would be running the wire through and having to do it when the dishwasher is upright and still working in the same space. It's a little bit, you know, a little bit more of a challenge, but it's doable and that's the way it's done. So right now, for my purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and put the cap, um, the, the electric, the cover, the cover for the box back on. Um, and this way we get that done. So that's back on. There you go, so that's tightened. Now the next step at this angle, we're gonna go ahead and prepare the water supply. So this is where that 90 degree elbow comes into play. You're gonna take this line um, and it is gonna be attached right here to this hose, hose bib type connection. And the way you secure it is you're gonna to wanna, to, at this point, you're gonna to wanna to be um, paying attention to A, where the uh, keeping in mind actually factoring in which side of the dishwasher your sink is on and how your water line is ran um, if your dishwasher you know just keep that in mind because it's going to determine which angle you want to have this elbow face in my situation here that i'm demonstrating i'm installing a, a stainless steel hose and i'm going to have i can actually connect this fitting just like this and r have it pointing to the back because then i can i'll secure the line here and it'll run to the back of the dishwasher and underneath my sink however you can also factor it in to go this way say you're forced to use like a copper line because that's what's existing and your line is running you know like this um but you know you just you know keep that in mind so this this uh, this as you can see can be moved um but what's really important at this step is once you go to thread this don't use any pliers yet this this you want to be very careful because this can this is plastic it's a hard plastic and you could easily cross thread it. If you cross thread it, you're gonna have a problem and it's not something that can be fixed. You, you got a major problem here. You'd have to replace this valve. Um, so you just take your time here and just go ahead and put it, like I said, by hand, no force. If it's not threading smoothly or easily, stop, back it back out and try again. So as you can see, I'm real nice and smooth, nice and easy. It goes full by hand all the way. Um, and then you can give it as much as you can by hand. As, as I said, I'm gonna point mine to the back, but I got it nice and tight. And then all you have to do is give it a little quarter turn um, at the end to, to snug it, but you don't wanna over tighten it. So again, it's a plastic fitting. So, and there's, there was, as I don't know if you noticed in this 90 degree elbow, there was a rubber washer. So these um, create the seals that's necessary without any um, additional uh, tightening that's, you know, without an unnecessary tightening. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a, just a little snug. As you see, I'm barely, you know, barely an eighth of a turn. Just it didn't take much because I tightened, I took it all the way by hand and then this is nice and tight. So that's it. I don't need any more there, um, but make sure it is secure. I'm just saying be extra careful by not cross threading um, that valve. The next step um, is going ahead and securing or attaching the supply line to the 90 degree elbow. And same thing, I'm gonna to point to you, show you what's inside. As you can see inside these hoses, there's also a washer. So um, again, all you do is you just come up to this thread, attack, do it by hand as much as you can go. Just make sure you get a nice and smooth. See, it's real easy to go. And then once you go as far as you can go by hand, then you could tighten this, um, this line. Once again, not necessary, to, it doesn't need to be over tightened, but it does have to be tightened because this is pressured, you know, it's pressurized. Uh, it's, it's not just like a flow of water like the drain. This is, you know, it's pressurized, so it does have to be tight, but don't over tighten it. So we'll give a few, uh, this usually, once you do it by hand, there's not much more to go, just maybe a couple turns at the very, very most. You'll see here once I, it's something that you really feel for more than anything else. Don't overextend, but so I'm nice and tight. I just double check myself here. Yep, that's it. So honestly, it probably was what two turns, if that. So that's nice and tight. So we have our supply line and the fitting connected. We have our electrical prepared so that it can be plugged in with a power cord. Um, Again, you may not be electrically ready, but I'll show you at what point you would want to do your electrical if you're hardwire. And then we also have the drain hose. As I showed you, um, it's already attached. 
that's where it's at down here at the pump. So the drain hose is already, it's coming from here and it's already ready to go. Now the final thing that I actually like to point out before standing, uh, getting the unit back on its feet is the legs. Um, these, it has four legs on the bottom and um, those are, of course are to level the unit uh, once it's placed. But once you're upright, it's very difficult to break loose these legs because there's not that much room to work. As you can see, once this unit's standing, you don't have a whole lot of room to get in here and get your arms back here to try to adjust these legs. So I recommend you break loose the feet before you go too far. So just break loose the feet because it makes it a lot easier to just, once you break it loose, as you can see, it makes it a lot easier to spin. So I go ahead and just do that. Break loose the feet, spin it out. Not too much, just enough because you got to still slide the dishwasher in place, but it's very tight and it's, like I said, almost nearly impossible to do it when it's in place. But I like to break it loose and then you can um, back it up. See like this one, for example, it's tight. And this one would, this one would be very difficult to get um, when it, once it's upright. So do it here and go enough to give you some room. Like I said, usually I, I back it out about a quarter inch. Sometimes it gives, there it is. All right, so got that done. And then the same thing on this side. So that was nice and easy. And this one here. Perfect. So we got our feet loosened up a little so that we don't have a hard time later once we're leveling the dishwasher. Um, and that is pretty much all you need to do um, to prepare the dishwasher for installation. All right, so the next step is gonna be to slide the dishwasher in place and make the necessary connections underneath your sink. And then of course we'll test, the, for, test for power as well as for leaks. But before I slide this unit in place, I'm gonna point, to you, point out to you a couple of things here. Um, one being that this particular installation is a just a, a test site for for demonstrating purposes so i have my outlet right back here against the wall that's not common um but that's where i'm going to be plugging my dishwasher in however typically your outlet should be located under the sink um i actually have an outlet here as well but um i got my garbage disposal plugged in there and i can potentially plug in the dishwasher uh there as well but either way just want to make you aware that it's not not, a, not like standard for your power outlet to be there. I know you see ours here. It is normal for it to be under the sink. The other thing I'm gonna point out is <clears throat> you're gonna have to, um, what you can see here is I got a filler that is in between, in the space where the dishwasher is, between the dishwasher and the cabinet under the sink. But I do have two holes um, that are right there. As you can see, my up the hole at the top there is gonna be where I'm gonna run the drain hose and then the hole down at the bottom is gonna be where I'm gonna run my water supply line. So I'll go ahead and go ahead and do that now. Just so you show you what that looks like. Um, this drain hose, like I said, we're just gonna run it right to the top. So it just goes right through here. And I'm gonna leave that note on there because I wanna mention that in the next step when I'm securing the lines under the hose. So let's leave that on there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and plug my dishwasher in and run my water supply line right through the bottom. So my next move is going to be to slide the dishwasher over and begin to push it into the space. Keep in mind this drain hose, it's really important that your drain hose doesn't run like a roller coaster in order for it to efficiently drain. It's in order for the dishwasher to efficiently drain. So as you can see, I have it, it's, 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 it's pushed into the, the way the, in the, on, the, on the side of the dishwasher, on the tub of the dishwasher. Try to keep that there so it gives it a nice flow of running towards the top. And then as you slide the dishwasher in place, just, just keep it so that the, dish, the drain hose stays towards the top of the dishwasher so it doesn't end up behind it and um, pinching it in any way. So as you can see, that stayed there. And then before I go too far, once I get about this far, what I like to do is come here under the sink and fish my lines, just to make sure that I'm free and clear of any obstructions and no kinks or anything. So push, pull the drain hose as much as it'll go, not too much, just there, 
and then the, I'm sorry, that was the supply line. Pull the supply line, and then the drain hose, the same thing. So once that's here, that's good, I'm clear. Then I'm gonna go ahead and pretty much, little by little, do the same thing back and forth. I'm gonna slide the dishwasher in place, and, and as I get, as I push it in little by little, what I'm gonna do is go back under the sink and pull my lines through. This way I'm, again, not potentially um, pinching the lines. So you can see what you do is you look, you look on both sides. This right here I didn't mention is an insulation blanket. It's, um, you wanna, you know, you don't, it's, you're not supposed to remove that. It stays for the dishwasher. It's a sound barrier, just helps absorb some of the noise, the water splashing inside. So make sure that stays there. Um, uh, it's insulation blanket. Now the other thing that I want to mention on this particular Frigidaire dishwasher, it comes with your mounting brackets pre-installed. They're right here. So you can take a look at them. You can see, so you can see it. I'm going to go ahead and try to slide the blanket out of the way so you can get a good visual of that. But see, so this is your mounting bracket. And as you can see on this particular mounting bracket, you have two placements where you could potentially secure the unit depending on your setup. So you, you have both options, um, some, you know, depending on where, where you find you know, a solid spot to secure it. Assuming you're drilling into um, either like a Formica or wood countertop, um, that's going to be fine. However, um, if you, in our case here, we have a granite countertop. And I don't, you know, I just, I steer away, I don't I shy away from drilling into any granite countertops just because it's not a one-time secure, you know, or it's a one-time secure, but you're constantly opening and closing a dishwasher door. So I just don't find that method to be very um, lasting. So what I typically recommend everyone does, if the dishwasher you purchased has the option to do a side mount, do that. However, this Frigidaire model in particular doesn't give you the side mount option. You can potentially buy a side mount kit and add it if you choose to. Um, and I actually do have um, some other videos on how to do a side mount installation, but for this for, for this for, for purposes of this video, what I what I did have here, um, and I actually want to point it out just so you can see it. Let me pull it out for a quick second. Right here is a bracket that I've attached to the bottom of the granite so that I could secure the dishwasher from the top. So this particular bracket, I actually will show you there. I, I have a video also posted on how to secure this bracket as well as. Um, uh, in the description below a link for um, purchasing that on Amazon but that's very useful if you have granite countertops and you have a dishwasher that doesn't have the option to side mount so you could definitely do that option which we're gonna I'm gonna show you that here in a minute that bracket will also come with these two small screws so the screws if you're gonna secure to that bracket the mounting screws that come with the dishwasher will be entirely too long these little screws come with that bracket when you purchase it the two screws that come with this dishwasher, as you can see, are almost triple the length. They're much taller, they're much, they're much bigger. So let's go ahead and continue. Um, I'm gonna push that back in. And we're here. Once we get to this point, I'm gonna go back and just make sure my lines are free and clear. And they are. I'm gonna give the, the final push. And we're about in place. So, and as you can see, my dishwasher, you, you, the, the, the placement of your dishwasher, where you want it to end up, is you want the control panel, which is this part here, to end up even with your countertop. So the only thing that should really pit, stick out past your countertop is just the handle. That's for a nice, clean, flush look. So make it even. You don't want to push it any further back than that. Even is about where you want to be. That's like the best placement that um, will be will allow for the hinges on the doors to operate freely. Of course, aesthetically, it looks you know most appeasing this way. Um, but that's that's there. Uh, and then now I'm going to go ahead and move on to making the connections under the sink. So we've already plugged the unit in for power. The next thing I'm going to do is I want to point out to you before I connect the drain hose. This warning. Um, was on the drain hose, it has a couple notices, so you wanna just keep, be mindful of it. One of it that I actually like to mention is that it 
if you're draining into a garbage disposal, if for example you replaced it recently or um, maybe had it replaced, it could be why you're replacing the dishwasher and not knowing, but be sure to confirm that the, the plug that comes with the garbage disposal, so every garbage disposal comes universal, to either be installed um, where a dishwasher is in place or if you don't have a dishwasher, you this is actually plugged off. So typically in here, when this is a brand new garbage disposal, right through the inside, it's plugged up. So you want to just grab a screwdriver, do yourself the favor, just run it through, make sure that your plug has been removed, um, because that's the one of the primary calls I ever get is someone's replacing, you know, has an issue with their dishwasher, it's not draining, and it turns out that the disposal was replaced, but um, the plug, it was, it was the, the the plug hadn't been removed. So. I'll go ahead and get that drain hose installed now. Um, you're going to grab your clamp, loosen it enough. Um, as I mentioned, with this particular drain hose on the Frigidaire line, the size of the drain hose is meant for a garbage disposal. So it fits perfect. So you don't have to, on this, this drain hose, it has a couple different size options. So you can see this is a one inch. So that's the size of this connection on the disposal. Then you also can go down to a 3 fourths inch and even further than that to a 5 eighths inch. Um, and you're, it's very important that if you are securing to a pipe that is to these sizes that you cut this out of the way or you at least have enough room to put the drain hose at that point and you tighten it there. You don't want to run this through a drain and it makes this tight connection and you secure it up here because that's just going to bend this it's going to do this with the drain hose and then you're likely to have a leak. You don't want it to just, you don't want it to do that. You want a nice tight connection on the drain hose. So as I said, this one fits perfect. I'm just going to slide it here and tighten down this clamp. So once you tighten that down, you can fully tighten it. And this is usually these clamps are like a flathead or you could use a nut driver as well. I'm using a flathead screwdriver here, nice and tight and give it a pull it's good now the next thing I'm gonna do is secure my water supply line my valve I'll, give, I'll try to give you guys eyes on it is right back here you see it right back there in the rear yep right there that's my um, my valve I'm gonna go ahead and secure my stainless steel hose right to that using um, again you could use a 5 8 inch um, wrench or an uh, adjustable wrench so, uh, and when I add this uh, when I attach this line what I do is I'll do the same thing as I thread it by hand as much as it'll go and then give it the final tightening turns before I turn the water on so I tighten that by hand now it's time to tighten it if you have CPVC plumbing it's really important that before you try to tighten that valve or that line that you hold the CPVC. If you just try to just go in there and start to tighten the, the line, you'll, you'll likely bend and crack the CPVC and you're just going to have a big flood. So I've, again, speaking from experience, you don't want that to happen to you. Um, hold the pipe by hand and then tighten it as much as you can. Um, but if you have copper, you might have a little bit more, you know, flexibility there. But either way, it's good practice just to know what you're doing when you're tightening these lines. So I'll tighten it down. All right, so that's nice and tight. Now what I like to do before I go any further is turn the water on. Um, so once that's turned on, So my water's turned on, probably heard it there. Um, and the reason, so at this point when the water's turned on, the very next step you wanna go ahead and do is go ahead and look underneath the dishwasher. Of course, first check your connection here. That's pressurized, so right away you're gonna be able to tell if there's gonna be a leak. Um, so check that connection, feel around your fittings, just make sure that it's, there's no, no, no drips, no leaks whatsoever. And then go ahead and move back to just lay, get eyes underneath the dishwasher, right where the supply line connects, which is right back here. I'm gonna put my finger back here. So right in here, and I'm feeling it, it's all nice and dry. So there's no water, um, but just you know, get a, make sure that before you go any further, 
that you verify that there's no leaks. At this point, you could leave the water on. Um, just leave it on the rest of the way. This way, if a leak is gonna um, happen, you're gonna be able to notice it right away. You don't wanna go any further. Now, the next thing that I recommend we do, you do before going any further. So our drain hose is connected and our supply line is also connect connected. So both of those are connected. Supply line's hooked up and the drain hose is also hooked up. So we're good there. The dishwasher's plugged in. My next move is going to be to just verify. What you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that before you go through the trouble of you know, leveling the unit and securing it, make sure you're in business. So uh, you can actually see my lights are already on. So I got the power, that's when I plugged it in, it shows you that it's been powered on. This still has a film on it, um, like a protective film. So you're gonna go wanna go ahead and remove your protective film off the dishwasher. And before going any further, do a quick test on your dishwasher. Just put a normal wash and hit the start button to start this particular model. Whatever model you have, you're using, just do a quick wash or a normal wash, choose normal, push start, close the door. Once you close the door, that will um, allow the unit to engage and start working. Initially, when you first um, plug it in and um, can make the connections, it's gonna do a prep cycle. So you'll hear it humming, it'll be humming, and once it's done humming, then finally the valve will open and release the water, uh, filling the dishwasher with water. Then from there, once it fills to the proper level, then it'll start to the wash cycle. And at that point, once it starts the wash cycle, that's when I say, you know, once it's, it's, it's running, wash cycle's on, pop the door open, doesn't hurt anything, there's just a little bit of water that'll be in there. Once that's done, you can hit the cancel button by a start, which is also cancel, hold it down for three seconds, that'll cancel. And once you do that, you hold it down for three seconds, it'll engage the cancel cycle, you close the door, and at that point, what will happen is it will begin to drain any water that is um, that's filled inside the dishwasher so do that and what you're looking for at that point is look under the dishwasher to the drain hose that I showed you underneath just make sure it's nice and dry there the pumps not leaking the drain hose is not leaking um, because it's not uncommon that I've installed I've installed a brand new dishwasher that will be leaking from the pump either a bad seal or it's cracked or something along those lines and you don't notice it when you're looking at it but the crack is there so Test your area before you go any further. So we run the, run the dishwasher, then after it drains underneath, um, you also come back over here to your drain connection and you do the same thing. Just look at your, the connection at your garbage disposal as well as um, you know, in the area, just verifying that you have no leaks. Then um, now we can go ahead and pretty much, once that's done and you've tested everything, you're pretty much in the final stages of the dishwasher. So in your final steps of installing your dishwasher, all you're gonna be doing is leveling the unit, and then of course we're gonna secure it, as well as um, install the kick plate. So when you're leveling the unit, what you're gonna to wanna to do is look for a few different things. You can get a little level if you'd like um, for this point, just so that you have um, you know, a perfect square unit. What's really important when you're leveling a dishwasher is you're leveling it with the ground. You're gonna find, you know, I've walked into multiple scenarios where you know, the countertop could be warped and it's, you know, uh, drooping down in the middle. So it's hard, you know, if you're trying to pinpoint, you know, a perfect level by just looking at it, it may not be, you know, it may not look as though, but the reason why you want to make sure it's level with the ground is because if it's not level, if the unit is, you know, not level flat on, a, like on the ground, then the door is not going to open and close properly. Um, it's going to create where one side of the, you know, essentially what's going to happen is your door is going to be, um, hitting the the actual tub of the dishwasher because it's, it's it's it'll be cockeyed a little bit. So I like to look at a couple of different things. So as I'm leveling it with the floor, I factor in a few points. Of course, I still want it to look aesthetically pleasing. I want my gap here and here to be, you know, perfect as well as my my spaces from here down here and uh, the same on the other side. So from here and here. So as you can see, I'm nowhere near perfect right now, so I'm gonna make a few adjustments. And at this point, in order to adjust this dishwasher to make it whole, what you're gonna be using is those four legs that we loosened in the very beginning. From what I'm looking at, I'm pretty close, but I need to raise this leg a little bit or drop, obviously, the other leg. But I'm gonna go ahead and go with raising this leg slightly. And actually, 
I'm gonna drop the other one a little bit as well. All right. And um, the other thing is as you level it square with the ground, the pitch for the dishwasher, you wanna have it as straight as possible and it can have a, a not even really visible. The drum itself sits as it should, but more of a, you know, a, a tip to the back. But as I said, you don't actually have to. They're designed to already be, um, you know, in the position that they need to, to drain properly. But it's just important that you don't have it secured and the unit is leaning forward. You don't want it leaning forward because it will, it can potentially leak from the front because obviously there's water splashing in there and you want to make sure that it's not leaning to the front. So it is leaning to the back at all, but as I said, it just, the perfect, you know, level would be just having this frame going just perfectly straight up and down. Um, as I said, you can grab a level at this point just to make sure. Um, may, may or may not have one here with me. Uh, yeah. no. But, so from this point, my gaps are perfect all the way around. My spaces are good. Now the final step, once you have it looking perfect and level, um, the final, just so it doesn't move on you when you try to open the door to secure it, I usually just grab a screwdriver and I hold back the, dr the, the drum with a flathead screwdriver so that I can pop the door open. Because it, 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 it clamps, you know, clamps closed. It's pretty tight. It's a tight, you know, closed um, mechanism. So just hold it to the top back so it doesn't move and then pop the door open, still perfectly in place, and look for your two screws, either the mounting screws that come with the dishwasher if you're securing to your countertops, or the two screws that are used with the, the granite um, bracket, the bracket that's used for granite countertops. And all you're gonna do is, if you look here, what's nice about this bracket is it's got many holes and we just look for what's the closest. As I can see, you can see I got one right here and I can just tighten it right to this. You have the option um, to, that, that's nice and tight, you have the option to bend this back and forth and remove it so it's not overhanging as you see it is here. So same thing on the other side. We're gonna do the same exact thing. You can see we got a hole right there, perfect. And tighten that down. Nice and tight, same thing. You can bend this back and forth and remove it. And as you can see, the dishwasher is nice and secured um, in the space. And it closes just the way it should. The final thing here, once you have it leveled and secured, is installing the kick plate. So there's the back of the kick plate. Again, it's got some insulation. Um, helps um, reduce sound. Good, just because down there is where your pump and everything is located. Um, but from here, what we're going to do is go ahead and just run the kick plate. I want to point to you here on this kick plate, there's two holes. One here and one here. These two holes will actually line up. Once you go to install the kick plate, there's two um, drop down uh, pins that are coming down from the bottom of the drum. I'm um, sorry, the tub, and they'll go right into this position. This way you know your dishwasher or, or your kick plate is locked into place. So typically as you go into this, in this motion, and you go right to the back, it will line up with it, just because it's, it's the, you designed it pretty much perfectly to go in that position. So once you get to that point, you go here, and you can feel where that goes. So you can actually feel where that's going, and and it goes into the, the, those pins that I'm referring to. And once I get that lined up, you can see right there, there's the placement for my screw, the hole right there. And the connection, I mean, the, the extension is right there as well. So I raise the kick plate and I could secure the unit right there. So we'll go ahead and pop that screw in. I'd like to just start it first and then um, put the other side on and then I tighten it down. So same thing on this side. Oops. 
So again, you could use a flathead screwdriver here, or um, I'm sorry, a Phillips screwdriver, or a uh, nut driver, a quarter inch nut driver for that screw. So you can tighten that down. What's gonna happen if you don't properly, um, if you don't install the kick plate properly, what is likely going to happen is that it's gonna come be uh, stick out, come forward, and event, it, it may do it right off the bat. Where when you try to open the door, the bottom of the door will actually scrape the kick plate, and you'll hear it. So it's important that you install the kick plate, uh, you know, in the in the in the grooves and in the position that it's supposed to be installed, so that your door does open and close freely without hitting the the kick plate. Um, and there you have it. That's how to install a Frigidaire dishwasher. Um, as you can see, I left the blue on. I recommend you do the same till the very end because with stainless steel, it'll get uh, fingerprints all over it. But I typically like to wait the very end to take all the packaging off. Um, I really hope this video helps and um, helps you through your installation. And if you so, give me a like and of course, subscribe and uh, subscribe to our channel for more installation related videos. Thank you.